The Math Center presents Z-scores and Z-tables. We'll talk about what are Z-scores, finding a Z-score for a data value, how to make a Z-score calculator in Excel, using a Z-table to find probabilities, and finding a Z-score when given a probability. So what is a Z-score? A Z-score is the number of standard deviations from the mean. Z-scores measure how far a value is from the mean measured in standard deviations. You can use z-scores to measure relative position. With the diagram, you can see that negative z-scores happen when the data value is below the mean, or zero. Positive z-scores happen when the data value is above the mean, or above the zero. To find the z-score for a data value, first you have to find the mean and standard deviation of the data set if they are not already given, then you have to plug the raw score, mean, and standard deviation into the formula. If you are not familiar with the symbols, this would translate as z-score equals raw score minus mean, all divided by standard deviation. If you are given a set of data, you will need to find the mean and standard deviation before you can calculate the z-score using Excel. It is helpful if you label in one column what values represent so that in the column next to it, you can actually enter the Excel commands to make these calculations. So for mean, you will type equals average, open parentheses, select all of your data, and then close your parentheses. For standard deviation, the Excel command is equals stdev.s, open parentheses, select your data, and close the parentheses. Keep in mind you want the dot s, not the dot p, because that will give you a different value. Another Excel command that might come in handy is the count function, and that is equals count, open parentheses, and select your data, close the parentheses. For example, if I eat 17 donuts, how far am I from the mean? In this case, mean equals 8 and standard deviation equals 5.08. In the formula, you have your raw score minus the mean divided by standard deviation. So we will plug those values in. Our raw score is 17 because I ate 17 donuts, and I'm subtracting the mean of 8. Then it is all divided by 5.08. When this is plugged into a calculator, 17 minus 8, then divided by 5.08, the result is 1.77. Keep in mind your z-scores should always be rounded to two decimal places. As stated previously, you can also use Excel to calculate the z-score by setting up the formula. Keep in mind this formula will require your mean, standard deviation, and raw scores to have cells dedicated to their values. So to find the z-score, you are going to use the command equals parentheses, select the cell that has your raw score value minus the cell that has your mean value. Close the parentheses and then divide by the standard deviation value. And you can just click on the cells as you are typing the formula. When you hit enter, it will automatically calculate your z-score for you. These calculators can also help calculate z-scores. The z-score calculator online includes a z-score calculator and probability calculators. And the Excel z-score table and calculator download includes a z-table and a z-score calculator when sample size is given. If I eat 17 donuts, what percentage of the population ate fewer donuts than I did? You can answer this question using a z-table. We had already calculated z equaled 1.77. So on the z-table, I needed to find the row that had 1.7, then I needed to go across until I was under 0 0.07 because 1.7 plus 0 0.07 equals our z-score of 1.77. The four-digit decimal that you see in the z-table is the value that you are going to need to use. Using the same example, if I eat 17 donuts, what percentage of the population ate fewer donuts than I did? 
The probability of having a z-score less than 1.77 is 0 0.9616, which is the area under the normal distribution curve. So the percentage of people below a z-score of 1.77 is 96.16%. Alternatively, if I eat 17 donuts, what percentage of the population ate more donuts than I did? The probability of having a z-score less than 1.77 is 0.9616, which was to the left of 1.77 in the normal distribution curve. But because I want the percentage of the population who ate more donuts is going to be 100% minus 96.16%, which equals 3.84%. You could also do 1 minus 0.9616 if you wanted your answer to be represented as a decimal. Z-scores can also be used to compare relative positions. For example, if I eat 8 hamburgers, how far am I from the mean? In this example, mean equals 3 and standard deviation equals 0 0.5. If I plug the values into the Z-score formula, that would give me z equals 8 minus 3, all divided by 0 0.5. Then, on a calculator, that would give me z equals 10. To compare the relative position, you compare the z-scores. In our donut example, 17 were eaten, the mean was 8, and standard deviation was 5.08. The z-score for our donuts was 1.77. In our hamburger example, 8 were eaten, the mean was 3, and the standard deviation was 0.5. Our hamburger z-score was 10. So relatively speaking, I am farther away from the mean of the hamburger group than I would be in the donut example. To find the z-score from probability, you have to use a z-table. If the probability of an event is 0 0.6985, you look for that value on the z-table. From there, you can look and see that the row 0.6985 is in, is in 0.5, and the column is 0 0.02. So 0 0.5 plus 0 0.02 equals 0 0.52, which means your z-score is 0 0.52. If the probability of an event is 0 0.8500, you can look for that on the z-table, but you won't find that exact value. Instead, you're going to find the next closest value you can. In this case, it is 0 0.8508. For 0 0.8508, it is in the row for 1.0, and it is in the column for 0 0.04. So 1 plus 0 0.04 equals 1.04, so our z-score is 1.04 or you might be able to estimate 1.035 since our actual probability was slightly less than what was shown in the Z table, but regardless, you can still use 1.04. Thank you for watching this presentation on Z scores and Z tables.